going to visit the outlying areas of the city and the county during the first two weeks of the festival. It aims to provide health and welfare information for women and also to publicise the festival. Well, the city, direct, the city's direct involvement is, is fairly minimal, um, but indirectly it, it, it made a number of contributions and it helped um, by providing, uh, obviously with a charge, but the women's bus and uh, the transport department were very helpful over that. And it was interesting that in that process we asked to have a woman driver because it seemed fitting to drive the women's bus around, and it turned out that there wasn't a woman driver around, although that there are many women employed by the city transport department. There wasn't one who could do the special job of driving this bus, and so I think that was interesting that that was raised, and we've asked the transport department to look at that and to examine why it is on a particular rotor. Um, they also, the city was also prepared to show that the commitment and the, the amount of work that people, that women are prepared to put into it and believe that it was a worthwhile exercise. Originally, it was, the idea was just to, to have something around International Women's Day and to try and celebrate that in a very strong way, in a way that hadn't been done in Nottingham for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's developed into more of that, and I think it is very much a celebration of women. Mm -hmm. Sisters, on behalf of Swapo Women's Council, may I share with you our revolutionary salutations to all women on this particular day in the name of the Namibian people under the leadership of our movement Swapo. The 80th of March reminds us of the fact that our struggle is not isolated, showing us that the struggle of women is the struggle of humanity and making us aware of the progress already achieved. There are many women who should have been here with us today. Those who in their liberation struggle have created the political, moral, and even physical conditions for our meeting here. Their sacrifice is a bridge to our future progress. We want every women's organization to understand the suffering of the people of Namibia. We want them to know that we are fighting. And we want to tell them how they can help us. We rely on the support of women's groups throughout the world. They are sharing the same problems, and together we must find the solutions. Sisters, like I said, I'm very happy to be here with you, but inside me, the grief is still there because up until the, the events of October the 25th, 1983, Grenada, and especially the women of Grenada, were indulged or were indulging themselves for the first time in the history of our country, right? A freedom that we have never experienced before as women of the Caribbean, as black women, I would say not only of the Caribbean but of the third world and elsewhere. 
The first two of our sis women who were employed on the docks, and that was a big event. And that took place two weeks before the Americans moved in. It was a big celebration on the island, because anything like that happened, it becomes a celebration because it's a new thing. You know, it's a form of freedom. No longer are you seen as the child bearing be a property. Two of our sisters were employed on the docks. One was as a training manager, and the other one was as a dock foreman, telling the fellas where this goes and where that goes. And it was a big thing. It was a big day celebration. This is how much it meant to us. This was how much the revolution meant to us. So I can tell you, sisters, when the Americans move in with their big boots, uh, they did a lot of damage, both mentally and physically. Although some of our aims and objectives <laughs> are the same as yours, our paths will certainly differ at times. So we're saying that sisters who are sincere should organize themselves and figure out strategies to break down the prejudice that exists in white communities. And that is where they can function most effectively in the white community itself. And our white sisters will want to help us and have been helping us, but we find out that there's been reasons at this point for that. The two most common reasons seem to be one, that it meets people's needs for progress and they'll use it along the job scale. Also, we get a liberal approach, which people just come out and with wishy-washy statements to keep us happy. Or else you get a paternalistic approach, we'll look after them because they're incapable of looking after themselves. Um, and this is happening at the moment. If we refuse to allow this to happen, then we get a lot of negative things like anger, frustration. Well, we can only, as black women, see this as perpetuating racism and refusing to acknowledge that we're visible, we're here, and we're capable. Last but not least, Swapo Women's Council salutes all women today. Our message for this particular event is, sisters, people do not get what they do not want, and they do not work for what they do not imagine. The struggle continues. Victory is certain. United, we shall win.
difficult thing for women now is that when, even when they're not being aggressive, when they're actually being assertive, when they're being clear and honest and upfront and straightforward in their communication, that that still is not acceptable. That was certainly a focus for anger, that the information wasn't available, that women just weren't given the right kind of information about birth control, about controlling their infertility. We didn't feel like we knew anything about Afro-Caribbean or Asian women's experience of birth control in this country or elsewhere. When the festival was planned, um, there were no provisions made for lesbianism to be talked about in these, these workshops. It's, the way it's been talked about is that lesbians have been, um, the topic has been seen as a very isolated thing. It's like you talk about, you can talk about lesbian as something, but in actual fact it should have been right across the board in, and have its relevance talked about in all the different sort of workshops. It's not just a, um, an isolated topic. Being alone doesn't mean being lonely. But lonely is a very negative thing to talk about. But being on your own, you can say, I'm alone, but alone and strong and independent and in control.
comes to women in this culture is that basically they feel that their body doesn't belong to them. First of all, it belongs to, again, in the roles of mother and mother or lover or somebody's wife. Um, women feel that their body is, is not actually theirs but belongs to somebody else. All right. So, you know, if you're breastfeeding, your, your breasts aren't really yours, you know, they, they, they belong to your baby somehow. Um, if you're pregnant, your body is a vehicle for somebody else. Um, I think if, when women um, go to the doctors or in, are, are in hospital, they very easily hand themselves over, if you like, um, and feel that their body doesn't belong to them. I think women have bits of their bodies removed rather too, rather too readily, which, which I think is, for women who are concerned about women's health, it's a very worrying thing. Any self-help, which I think a workshop is a sort of self-help thing, um, can only do good, really, because when you find that there are other people experiencing what you're experiencing, you start to feel altogether more normal, and you may, f you may get ideas, really, from other women on how you can um, usefully change your life. I think change of life is a very, very good uh, terminology for the menopause, really.
is it, is it women who are always yes, do that? Yes, it's women who do it, and then they dance to it as well. of being in that situation in that women are often seen as peripheral activities, peripheral to everything, and they carry on doing things unnoticed and unseen. And um, we wanted, I thought it would be a nice idea to have all the things going on as people came in, so that initially they weren't really aware of what was happening. It was only as they sat down that they realised there was a regularity and a sort of theme running through the whole thing. I wanted to raise the issue of how um, housewives living at home carry on with their work as artists and the difficulties it involved because um, the way your time is fragmented by so many things in the household that we do, the washing, the cooking, the kids to take to school. Um, and if you have a bit of space at home that you work in, you find you don't go to that space until you've done all the other things, which very often means there's not really much time. And of course, in, in actual fact, that's what happens. You know, your daily life doesn't change. And okay, you may wash nappies initially, and you end up washing shirts at the end of it. But um, you're still washing, you're still cooking, you're still cleaning. It's the only, eight, only the age of the children that makes the difference. There were 20 sequences. And the idea was that um, each sequence represented a year of my life.
Rock and roll, everything is based on blues, which is why we're trying to dig up little by little um, all the original blue, great women blues writers. Um, and American feminists try and do that too. Um, it's just a really, really long, long process because most of them are in obscurity, like most women artists, you know, they're all anonymous. And their, their music is based out of struggle, out of work songs and gospel and hope and, you know, singing to their children and whatever. And that we're really aware of that. It's like, we really want to reach out to black women um, as well. It's a project we've got ahead of us, like reaching out to black women's centers and, and trying to connect by, some, you know, not as, as white women, but as women who can share our common background. Most music um, of any culture is, is defined by men. And so we don't really want to, if somebody says, you're not African, you can't play African music. It doesn't really mean anything to us as women. It's like we're still trying to find where the, you know, where the women's role is, where the women's part in the development of that music was. We played in um, a gay pride march in yeah, Hyde Park so in 1979 with Tom Robinson. Okay, nice gay program for the telly. Okay, they filmed us like for what, 15 minutes or so? And we were singing a song called Lesbian Fighting Song. No, Little Girls. And Little Girls. Yeah. We saw the television program. There was absolutely nothing of us on it. Everybody else. I remember it. it was so male orientated. Like you, they were interviewing one gay man after the other. And as they were interviewing, we could hear little girls from the background. Yes. Some little girls say no. I thought, I don't believe in it. change was first of all started in Battersea at Battersea Arts Art Centre and it was set up by a group of women art students um, as a conference to discuss the position of women artists in colleges and the sort of sexism that goes on in art education. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're, we're part of the feminist art group in Martin. And we sort of were the hosts, or hostesses. And the last one that was in Nottingham has been the first one which has been organised by women outside of art colleges, which forms that link between what happens to women out, out of college and the students in colleges. It's important in terms of women's art, you know, to perhaps identify just the way women work anyway from different sexual point or starting point in them. A lot of women's art is actually about themselves and exploring or re-identifying a sexuality of their own.
gates, you're crossing an official picket line. Right. And we don't agree with that privatisation of the laundry service in this hospital, tell him, come on. No. <laughs> yeah, do you realise it's, it's their first person laundry service, 264 people are going to lose their jobs? That's uh, a lot. That's and, and, and let me tell you something else. This is an official picket line, and if you cross it, you'll have to run over us first. All right. <laughs> Yes, it'll keep some trees as open wearing her. 